Praise the Lord. We're here tonight, Free Indeed Ministries, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ that makes the believer free from their sin. I want to get right into the word tonight. There's a not really a good starting place for me, um, so I might just do a good bit of reading. But over here in, in 1 Peter, um, I'll just start reading at the first chapter. Maybe we'll just end up reading most of the chapter. But uh, it's going to start off speaking about the salvation that's you know, found in Jesus Christ. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And this speaks really of our experience, you know, our walk here on earth. You know, we have hope, you know, in, in this life of, of what Christ would do for us. And we also have hope, you know, in, you know, in, the, in the next life, I guess, as you would say, you know, in heaven. You know, the scripture says in another place, says we wait for, you know, our change, speaking of the redemption of our bodies. And that's the hope that we hold, you know, in the new heavens and the new earth. Uh, also, that we would enter into a place where there is no sickness, where there is no you know, sin, where there is no devil, where there, where there is none of those things, no even, you know, n- n- nothing, you know, um, that, you know, it, the scripture says where God would wipe away every tear from our eyes, where it would, there would be no more sorrow, there would be no, no, no more parting, n- none of those things. That's, that's our hope that we hold, you know, for the world to come. Our hope for the world to come isn't, you know, a, a, a hope to be made free from sin. It's not a hope to put off the old man. It's not a hope to be sanctified. It's not a hope to, you know, be purified and cleansed from all unrighteousness. And that's not what we hope for in the world to come. That's what we have now. In, in the scripture, I mean, it, it says that, you know, right here. The way, where we stopped, it said who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. At the coming of Jesus Christ, there's you know, a, a bride you know, ready to be revealed to Him. There is a church ready to be revealed to Him. You know? and, and yes, they've, you know, they've been with Him this whole time. You know? but, but that day that Jesus Christ returns, He's not you know, returning for a people that are sinful. He's not you know, returning for a people that are still committing abominations. He's, he's not returning for that type of people. He, he's returning to those who have been washed and sanctified and justified by his own blood. And that's what it means when it says ready to be revealed in the last time. We, we have the, the salvation of our souls. We have our sanctification, our purification, all through Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is our hope in this life. That's what we have in this life. In this life, we're never going to have, you know, all, what the scripture talks about, a, a glorified body. In this life, we're never going to be in a place where, you know, there is, you know, no, you know, adversary. You, you know, the, 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 it says the devil goes about seeking whom he may devour. The scripture later, it's going to talk about the trial of your faith. And in this life, you know, there's going to be persecution. And here in America, we haven't even really seen what persecution is, but the scripture says all who live, you know, godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In this life, there will be persecution, there will be tests, there will be trials, there will be, you know, those things, there will be those, you know, enemies of the cross, there will be those who hate the gospel of Jesus Christ, there will be those who hate what you stand for. Um, and, and so, you know, in the, in the world to come, there will never be those things, you know, and that's our hope for the world to come, but our hope for this life, 
is to be made free from sin, to be cleansed, to walk with Jesus Christ. And, you know, it says that. Um, It says, elect according, this is back in the second verse, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, uh, Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, he's, he's speaking of, of now. You know, this is what God has purposed for now. When it speaks of the foreknowledge of God, that means this is what God intended, you know, for man to be. This is the, the new heart and the new spirit that God intended you to have. This is the holiness that God intended you to have when he created man in his image and in his likeness. And the way that man is restored back to that is through sanctification of the spirit. Unto obedience in the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. You know, it's grace unto you. It's not grace unto you someday afar off, but now grace has come through Jesus Christ in him crucified. But, you know, scrolling, scrolling on down, reading on down, it says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold, that perish it, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory." receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And it speaks of, you know, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. At the same time that, that you're in the trial of your faith, you know, being tried with fire, you're also rejoicing in joy unspeakable and full of glory. You're not rejoicing because of the trials. You're not rejoicing because of, you know, all the, the persecution. You're not rejoicing because there are those enemies of the cross of Christ who come against you. You're rejoicing because of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You're rejoicing because of the life that's found in Him. The peace, the, 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 the joy, and all these things that Christ gives through the salvation that we have prepared for us now. You know, if, if salvation was just about what we're going to receive in the future... If all it was about was that, you know, he, you know, he sees you as righteous, you know, but you're going to be a sinner until the day you die, you know, what, how, how would you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory? You know, if you had to, even here and now, you know, you're, say you're, a, you're, an, you're, you're an alcoholic, bound by alcohol, bound by that sin, and you're, you know, things are so, so bad, how can you rejoice with joy unspeakable? If there's trouble on the outside and trouble on the inside, how can you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory? How can you have uh, you know, a joy you know, beyond comprehension? How can you have a peace that passes all understanding when you're troubled on the outside, but also troubled on the inside? How can these things be? You know, if you're troubled on the inside, you don't have peace. You know, there's... You know, it's possible, you know, that everything can be going wrong on the outside. But if you have Christ on the inside, you know, it's, there is no storm on the inside. Though the waves seem to be raging, you know, and the storms and the trials and everything going wrong, you know, on the inside, it's just peace like a river, you know, joy like a fountain, love like an ocean on the inside, because that's what Christ does on the inside, you know, in in the new heart that he gives us, in the new spirit that he gives us. It's just filled with good things, filled with all those fruits of the spirit, because that's what Christ died to give us. You know, if if those things were not so, you know, it would be impossible, you know, to rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You know, I know what it is to be bound by addiction. I know what it is you know, to struggle with pornography every, you know, day. Until the day that I got saved, it was, it was with me every day. There was no getting away from it. And I'm going to tell you, in that time, in that struggle, there was no rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory. There, there was none of it. I came to church, you know, went to church, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday nights, Wednesdays, you know, went to the camp meetings, revivals, you know, all those things. I, I was there, 
You know, seeking to play the part, seeking to, to do what I thought was right, to do what I needed to do. But until Christ made an end to the sins on the inside, there was no rejoicing. There was only, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? They say that that's the normal struggle of a child of God, that Romans 7 experience, struggling with sin every day of your life. But how can these two things be true? How can a person live day in and day out with that cry in their heart, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? How can they live in that experience and at the same time rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory? The two are are completely opposite. You know, you can't do both at the same time. You can't feel like you're living in a body of death, but also have joy unspeakable and full of glory. It, it It just doesn't happen. The only way that that joy comes, the only way that that peace comes, the only way that that glory comes is when Christ delivers you from that body of death, when He ends the struggle, when He cleanses you from all unrighteousness, when you finally receive everything that He died for, everything that He accomplished on the cross. It's prepared for you. Jesus said, you know, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. This wasn't talking, you know, about our place in heaven. It wasn't talking about a mansion in the air. It wasn't talking about a cabin. But it was talking about that that place of Christ. As it's going to say in in 1 John, many places, uh, speaking of abiding in Christ, abiding in Him. That's the place that He went to prepare for us. A, A new kingdom, a new dwelling place, a new place of rest. You know, everything was lost in the fall of man. Everything was lost when sin entered. But Christ went to the cross to to redeem us from all iniquity. He purchased us with His own blood. His own blood sanctifies and cleanses us from all sin. And when that happens, it brings a, a joy, you know, beyond anything that we can even comprehend. But it says in the 10th verse, it says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Now, many people might think that it's a, a boastful thing you know, for me to say. But the things that I've just explained to you, the things that I've just spoken in just very few minutes about Christ washing us and cleansing us from all sin about Him giving us a new heart, giving us a new spirit, you know, taking away the, the stony heart out of our flesh, you know, filling us with, with all the fruits of the Spirit, filling us with Christ, and us dwelling in Christ, dwelling in a, a new kingdom, having a new place of rest. This is what those prophets searched diligently for. You know, all the great men of the Old Testament, this is what they looked for. The Scripture says... About Abraham, it says, Abraham, you know, saw my day. And, it's, and Jesus was speaking. It says, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it afar off and he rejoiced. The day that Abraham saw was the day that God provided himself a sacrifice. He saw that. He said, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. You know, that God would provide himself a sacrifice when, when he saw that, that ram caught in the thicket. And he offered it in the place of his son. It was almost like like a prophecy of Calvary when God would send His Son, you know, as a sacrifice to take away our sin. That's the day that Abraham saw. That's the day that Abraham rejoiced in. That's the day that Abraham looked for. You know, all Isaiah, when he when he hears, you know, uh, sees the the sufferings of Christ, when he sees the the glory that would follow, when he sees all these things that he prophesied of, he's looking for it, he's wanting it, he's wondering how how are these things going to happen? How is God going to bring these things to us? When when is it going to happen? God, bring it now. God, do it now. But it wasn't done in their day. But it is here for us in our day. The things that I speak to you today, you know, that, I, that, that, I've, that I've already spoken to you about being made free from sin and being cleansed from all unrighteousness. This is what the prophets looked for. This is what the great men of the Old Testament looked for. You know, why should it be said that we, we, we should wish that we live in the days of the Old Testament when they themselves would be wishing they could have lived in this day? 
when they themselves would be wishing that they could have received, you know, Christ and, and what he has prepared for us. You know, what, you know David, you know, would have re- much rather lived in, the, in, in, in this day where he could have received a new heart and a new spirit. He would have much rather lived in this day when he could have been cleansed from all unrighteous. He would have rather been here today, you know, than slaying the giant. You know, he would have rather been here today than, you know, slaying the bear or, 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 the, or the lion or, or, or even being king of, being king of Israel. You know, he would have given all that up if he could have had what Christ has provided for us today. You know, all, all of the great men, all their great and, and, and mighty, you know, actions and all their works, there was something more valuable to them. And that's what, what Christ would have given, you know, if they, you know, would have lived in this day. You know, but, but it wasn't prepared for them, you know, because Christ had not come. Christ had not died. But Christ has come. Christ has shed his blood. And there's so much greater things than all the stories of the Old Testament. There's a, there's a greater miracle than God parting the Red Sea. There's a greater miracle than God, you know, destroying the armies of the Egyptians. There's a greater miracle than him delivering them out of Egypt with all the, 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 their gold and all the, the spoils of war. There's a greater uh, miracle than him bringing them into the land of Canaan. There's a greater miracle than the manna from heaven. There's a greater miracle than the waters, you know, that, that, that gushed out of the rock. There's a greater miracle than all of those things. And it's what Christ has prepared for you today today. Jesus said, he said, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. There's something greater than the manna that comes from, from that, that they had in that day that came down from heaven. But, but Jesus, you know, is our daily bread. You know, the, the bread that would sustain us in, in, in our souls, that we would have rest for our souls. They drank water that gushed out of a rock, but they, you know, they, you know, <laughs> You know, it, you know they, they turned against God. It didn't do anything for us, for them. But Jesus said, you know, if you knew the gift of God, you would have asked of me and I would have given you the living water. You know, everything that Christ has prepared for us is so much greater than anything seen in the Old Testament. So much greater than all the Bible stories that we hear of. All the things that were taught, you know, from such a young age and things that we need to know. Uh, about the, the history and the stories of what God did. But I'm telling you, the most important thing that God did, the most important thing that is provided for us is what we find in Jesus Christ, what we find in His, you know, in His blood, what we find in His, in His broken body. It's going to say over in, in Hebrews, it says, entering in through the veil, that is to say, His flesh. You know, through his sacrifice that he offered on the cross. That's where we receive everything that God has prepared for us. You know, the, the children of Israel, after those who disobeyed God were destroyed in the wilderness, the next generation, you know, entered in, you know, to Canaan, Canaan's land. The next generation enter in, entered into that physical land that God had promised. But they did not enter into the rest that God had provided the scripture says if, if uh, Joshua would have given them rest. You know, uh, in, in Hebrews it says that. But they entered into the physical land that God promised to Abraham. But they never entered into the rest that God had prepared for them. They never became that holy nation. They never became that kingdom of priests. They never became that peculiar people. They never became that nation, you know, above every other nation. God did great and mighty miracles and great and mighty things, but because of their unbelief, they could not enter in. But I'm here today to tell you that if you will believe the gospel, everything that the prophets looked for, everything that they searched for, everything that they spoke of, that so many people tell you, well, that's only in the resurrection. That they tell you that's for waiting uh, uh, far off. That, 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 that we, you'll struggle for, for as long as you live, but you'll never achieve it. No, it, it, it's here and it's now. Peter says, through sanctification of the Spirit. Elect, you know, this is back in the second verse. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. 
everything that they say is is you know waiting you know somewhere you know in the future you know peter says you know it's here you know it's now paul he says and such were some of you but you are washed you're sanctified and you're justified he's not saying you're being sanctified he's not saying you're being justified he's not saying you're you're you know being cleansed he says you are washed you are sanctified. You are justified. And that's why he can say, such were some of you. That's why I can say there were, there's been people, you know, including myself, who was addicted to pornography, but I can say such were some of you. Because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. That's why I can say there were, there were those that, that were bound by alcoholism, but such were some of you. There were those that were filled with lust. There were those that were consumed with hatred. There, there, there were those that were bitter you know, in, 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 on the inside at everyone around them. There were those who, who thought they were better than everyone else. There were those who were covetousness. There were those who were murderers. There were those who were thieves. But such were some of you. If they believed the gospel, if they received you know, what Christ has provided it for them in this life, it is such were some of you. Because they're washed, and they're sanctified, and they're justified. You know, they're a new creature. As the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Why are all things become new? Because you are washed. Because you are sanctified. Because you are justified. You know, that's what Jesus Christ, you know, went to the cross for. That was the the, the purpose. It says in Daniel 9 and 24, and I know we go through this, you know, nearly every service, that he's going to make, you know, he's going to finish the transgression. He's going to make reconciliation for iniquity. He's going to make an end of sins. He's He's going to bring in everlasting righteousness. I was listening to, a, or not listening, but I saw a conversation, you know, on the, on the uh, internet. Someone was, you know, speaking on these things, and someone told them, he said, you know, Daniel, that's a prophetic book. You know, that's for off in the future. You know, that's for, you know, another day. Well, I'm here to tell you that Christ died 2,000 years ago. It is the future. This is the day that Daniel prophesied of. It was a prophetic book. And it didn't happen until after Christ did it. But after Christ died on the cross, these things came to pass. They came to being because of what Christ had done. He did make that end of sins. You know, that's, that's what the prophecy was about. When Christ sheds His blood, there's going to be an end of sins. You know, when he dies on the cross, he's going to destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. You know, when he lays his life down, when he's buried in the, in the tomb, and when he's raised again, you know, he's going to you know, bring many with him. As the scripture says, you're begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He's right. Daniel was a prophetic book. And when Christ, you know, fulfilled all these things, it came to pass. You know, everything that he prophesied of, now we see it. I mean, there's things in other places in Daniel that, yeah, they're off in the future. But that one, that's a prophecy of Messiah the Prince. That's a prophecy of the Christ. That's a prophecy of Jesus and what he's going to come and what he's going to do. Well, the prophecy is fulfilled you know, he's come, he's died, he did everything, you know, that he was spoken of. You know, he, I mean, all, all the, the scriptures in the Old Testament, speaking of his crucifixion in Psalms, it's Psalms 22, you know, describes the crucifixion perfectly, how dogs have compassed him about, how they pierced his hands and his feet, they cast lots over his vesture, they mocked him. You know, in another place in Psalms, it says, you know, the plowers plowed my back like a field. They made long their furrows. How, how they, you know, cut him open through the, the, the whips and, and all the beatings. In Isaiah, it says his visage was marred more than any man. In the next chapter, it says he was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes we are healed. It describes the crucifixion. And it's the prophecies of everything that he's going to go through. But it also prophesies everything that he's going to bring in. The scripture says over here in 1 Peter the 11, it says the sufferings of Christ 
and the glory that should follow. When Christ suffers, when He lays His body down, there's going to be a glory that He brings in. There's going to be a work that is accomplished. You know, He didn't suffer and accomplish nothing. You know, He didn't suffer and, 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 and nothing to show for it. You know, if we have to lay these bodies down before we're made free from sin, then Christ's death was in vain. You know, if it's our death that changes us, then why did Christ need to die? But His death alone was sufficient to cleanse us from our sin. You don't have to lay this body down to be made free from sin. If you're still a sinner and you lay this body down, you're going to stand before God as a sinner and you're going to hear, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. But the Scripture speaks of Jesus Christ. It says He died unto sin once, and in that He you know, liveth, He liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alive unto God, not through our death. Alive unto God, not through our you know, natural resurrection. Alive unto God, not through our process of sanctification. But we're alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through what He accomplished, through what He did, through who He is. Through you know, His ministry as He sits at the right hand of the throne of God, ready to save them to the uttermost. That's who we are alive unto God through. Not of our works, lest any man should boast. But we're His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You know, everything, you know, the, the, everything that they looked for, the prophets, you know, the great men of the Old Testament, you know, David spoke of this in, I believe it's in Psalms 51, I believe. He's asking for, for God to wash him, to cleanse him, to give him a, 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 a right spirit, created me a new heart and renewed me a right spirit. This is what Christ is going to come, you know, and do. This is what Christ is going to come and provide. Yeah, David would find forgiveness David would be restored, you know, to have a relationship with God, but David would never have what Christ, you know, would come to give us. You know, because it would be impossible except for Christ shed his holy and precious blood, because that is the only way to be made free from sin. That is the only way to be cleansed, you know, from all unrighteousness. The scripture says over in Hebrews, you know, it says that they without us should not be made perfect. You know, there, there's something that they were waiting for. There's something that, that they were looking for. There was a day that they hoped for. There was a day that they waited for. And that day was the day of Christ. You know, and they looked for it and they saw what God had prepared. They saw what God was going to do. They saw, you know, everything that God had purposed for them. And they looked for it. They waited for it. You know, and, and, and you know, and it, it's just like, you know, them seeing it afar off, and every day it gets closer and closer and closer. But until Christ, you know, sheds his blood on that cross, until he's raised again, until he brings in that everlasting righteousness, you know, we can't have what he had prepared for us. You know, that's what it means when it says, you know, they search for it, they look for it, they long for it. But I'm going to tell you that, that when he died, when he shed his blood, you know, they, you know, with us were made perfect. As many as would believe, as many as would trust, as many as would call upon the name of the Lord should be saved. You know, they would be saved. You know, it, it sounds like there's an if there, you know, for whosoever, you know, it, but the scripture says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I'm going to tell you that everything the prophets look for, you know, it's come. You know, the, the, the new heart and the new spirit that, that Ezekiel saw, the laws being written upon our hearts like Jeremiah saw, you know, the, you know, the, the washing and the cleansing that David asked for, that he longed for, you know, the, the end of sins that, that Daniel, you know, spoke of in Daniel 9 and 24, you know, and, and so many other things you, you could go through. You know, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. The seed of the woman that would bruise the head of the serpent. You know, all, all of these things, you know, that they looked for and that they longed for. They're here, you know, for you. 
ready to be received, ready for you to enter into, ready for you to step into if you will believe the Gospel and call upon the name of Jesus Christ. You can have that salvation. You can have that new heart and a new spirit. You can be cleansed from all unrighteousness. You can have everything that God has prepared for you. You know, don't be fooled into thinking that you've got to wait any longer. No, you can rejoice in joy unspeakable and full of glory in this life. You don't got to live, you know, as a, a, you know, a a wretched, you know, man, you know, you know, who's who's seeking for deliverance from a body of death. You don't got to have that Romans 7 experience. You don't got to be bound by sin anymore. You know, Paul said, you know, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You don't have to have sin dwelling in you anymore. You know, I, I said Paul, but that was actually Saul of Tarshish. You know, because when, when Paul, you know, he, he called upon the name of the Lord, he found the one that would deliver him from that body of death. He found the one who would cleanse him from that sin. He found the one who would take away that hatred and take away that bitterness. He found what his soul longed for. He found what he asked for. He found the Christ. He found the Messiah. He found the one that the prophets prophesied of. He found the one that the the old men of, of God spoke of. He found what God had prepared for him. You can find the same thing. You can find the same thing that Paul the Apostle had. You can find the same thing that Peter had. You can find the same thing that Stephen had. You can find the same thing that all these men had. They weren't struggling with sin. They weren't bound with sin. They weren't overcome by sin. But they were overcomers by the blood of Jesus Christ. they, They found everything that God had prepared for them. You know, because they understood, you know, they understood what Christ came to do. You know, they had the revelation of Jesus Christ, that He came to make that end of sins. He came to finish the transgression. He came to bring in everlasting righteousness. He came to make reconciliation for iniquity. They knew that Jesus was the Christ. They knew that He had prepared this on the cross. You know, that was what they walked in. They didn't walk in self-righteousness. They didn't walk in through all of their good works. They didn't walk in all of their efforts and all of their abilities. They didn't walk, you know, in, in all the things that they could do. Step plans, philosophies. Paul said, beware lest any man spoil you through vain deceit and, and philosophies and psychologies. He warned us of those things. You know, he didn't walk in those things. That wasn't his confidence. That wasn't his assurance. He didn't have just a positive confession, you know, into believing something about himself that's not true. No, but he found a reality in Jesus Christ. In the same reality that they found. The same reality that any person has found who calls upon the name of the Lord. And they're washed and cleansed from all their sin. And they get up from the altar loving everyone around them and knowing that they've been changed. Knowing that they're different. Knowing that they're not you know, that, that old man anymore. Knowing you know, they're, that, they're, that they're not going to fall to sin anymore. Knowing you know, that Satan has no more control of them. You can find that same thing because it's all what the blood of Jesus Christ will do it did it for Paul it did it for Peter it did it for you know Stephen it did it for whoever would believe the gospel and it will do it for you too there's no other name you know by which man can be saved but, but in this name, the name of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the blood of Jesus Christ, everyone who comes to Him, everyone that calls upon Him shall be saved. The Scripture is going to go on. It says he's about how He's not a respecter of persons. He's not going to do it for one person and not going to do it for another. He's not going to do it for one generation and not going to do it for another. They preach about how well that was just the Old Testament times. No, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God spoke in the Old Testament. He says, I'm the Lord thy God. I change not. The same salvation that was provided, you know, 2,000 years ago, 
You know, the same salvation that was given, you know, in, in that day of Pentecost is given to, to you also. You know, it, it, he, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He did it for them. And if you believe like they believed, if you trust like they trust, if you believe that same gospel, you'll have that same salvation. Believe the gospel and put your G- trust in Jesus Christ and watch you know, and see him fulfill every promise you know, that he has for you. you know, God bless you. I love you.